massively, massively stressful. Right, so I thought quickly, today's vlog, I sat there and thought, right, so far, I have talked about my past, I've talked about my present, and I've kind of talked about my future. You know the mistakes I've made, you know the business that I'm trying to run now, and you know what I want to do in the future. What I want to talk about today is debt. And the reason I want to talk about debt is because today I received these emails. These emails are from a company called Bristow & Suter, who are bailiffs, and they're chasing me for unpaid council tax, and rightly so. But if you look at the wording of the letter and what they're suggesting there, they're suggesting that if I don't pay this within seven days, they're going to send it back to the council, who in turn will send it to the courts, and I'm going to go back to jail, okay? So I sat there and thought, out of all the letters I've got, I have a file. Look at the size of this file, look. I have a file here. As you can imagine, being in £133,000 worth of debt, which I've said about 12 times already, but there is so, so many companies chasing me. These are CCJ letters from the court, creditors letters, bank letters. There are three bailiffs chasing me. And I thought I'd do a vlog now, one, to show you my situation, but two, last year I ended up going to the doctors because I was in an absolute state and I was having chronic headaches, severe headaches, and nosebleeds, and I wasn't sleeping. And it was all down to this debt. You know, I barely turned up at the door, all these letters, I just, there was no way out. I felt like there was no way out. And in reality, the only way out of this situation is go bankrupt or pay it off. I refuse to go bankrupt, and I can't pay it off in one. So, after going to the doctors, I was diagnosed with acute stress and high blood pressure. For someone of my fitness level, I should not have high blood pressure. I was an absolute mess. And it was because of the way I was dealing with the situation. I did two things. I studied stoicism, which is definitely another topic for another vlog, because stoicism helped me massively. And two, I learned the powers that people have over me. And I looked and thought, what would happen with a CCJ? What's happening with these bailiffs? And I learned, actually, it's not that bad. Although being in debt is horrendous and it's massively, massively stressful, not much can actually happen to me. Nobody wants to make me bankrupt because I don't have any assets. I have had threats of bankruptcy, but what are you going to take? My car, which I bought for 1,400 quid, is now probably worth about 700 pound at auction. It's a banger. You're going to take that, yeah? What else are you going to take? Like, do you know what I mean? I don't have anything. What's the point in making me bankrupt? I also realise it actually costs companies and people a lot of money to make you bankrupt. So that went out the window. I then focused on, okay, what can bailiffs do? Assuming the debt isn't court fines and to Her Majesty, so it isn't taxed, tax man, then a bailiff can't force entry unless the only entry they can make is by a peaceful entry, which is opening the door. So if your doors are locked and your windows are locked, I'm not sure if you can get through windows anymore, but your windows are locked, there's nothing you can do. So when they send these letters, and I have three enforcement agents on my back, Marston's, Jacobs, and Bristow and Suter, and they all say the same thing. They all use threatening words, and they use words like warrant, because a warrant is very police-like, and you assume, you know, that, that is law-like and police-like. It's a lot of shit. So, I must say that the majority of the people I've spoke to, when I spoke to them at a decent level, were fine. They were fine back with me. I have spoken to a few assholes, you know, I think the 10 men, whatever. But most of them are all right. So I realized that now I understand their powers, I know where I stand. So when I get bailiffs knocking at my door and I get letters, I just treat them the same way. I return the letter with a letter and saying, look, this is my payment plan. As I advised in my last letter, this is what I'm paying. You refused my payment plan, so I'm paying the, the council direct. There's two councils that I'm paying. One is just keeping the money. The other one is sending it over to the bailiffs, and then a bailiff comes to me. I then also found that bailiffs, don't quote me on this, but I'm 99 .9 sure, they work on commission, either commission only or extra, extra commission. So if you put yourself in the shoes of a bailiff and you're knocking at somebody's door and then answering, and you do it two to three times, you're not getting paid for it, so you're probably not gonna do it again. You'll move on to somebody else who is, is playing ball. So I'm just refusing to play ball. Now, I, I'm fully aware that this is my fault. If I would have paid my bills and not buried my head in the sand, these bailiffs wouldn't be knocking at my door. So it's my fault. So I don't speak to them like shit. 
even if they you know have an attitude I just go look mate this is my payment plan this is all I've got you know I, I ain't getting any more money to give you sorry I'm not letting you in the property that's it and I've found that what I want to happen is I want it to go back to the council I want that to happen so this threatening email that I got this morning I want that to happen because if it goes back to the council I'll approach the council and say look I've been sending you money every week every month that's all I've got if you don't want to send it to a magistrate and you want to do a I think they call it a, a statement of means or a means inquiry where they look at my finances I'll walk in there and say look this is what I earn this is what I'm paying out this is what I've got left this is why I'm paying they then want to send me to prison so be it like so be it they will be ridiculous to send me to prison when I've been paying each and every week. So that's kind of how I've been dealing with it. When you think about that, I've got three enforcement agents on my back. Have you seen that program, If You Can't Pay, Take It Away, on telly? I think it's on Channel 5. It's only a matter of time before I appear on that. Hello, would you like to open the door, please? Well, But that's kind of how I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it that my situation is not going to improve immediately. It's not going to go away. So as long as I pay weekly, monthly, it might be 10 quid, 10 quid, 11 quid. I pay some of my debts a five or a month. As long as I'm paying something, then eventually it's gonna go away. My situation's gonna improve. So I hope this, this ramble, I'm sorry it's gone for a long time, has provided you with some information on the situation that I'm dealing with. You know, I know about debt. It is massively stressful, but I think I'm dealing with it the right way. I'm thinking about the future and just standing my ground. You know, because when, when people ring you and say, we have to ask you questions about your income. No, you don't. I've produced the income and expenditure. I'm telling you what I'm paying you. I'm not telling some kid at a call centre why. No, I'll pay you. And that's what I've kind of done. So my phone now, I just don't even answer it. My phone's in now, I just don't answer it. Any letter I get, I respond with a letter. I've got templates on my PC. And I just send it and keep sending it off. And eventually what I found is most debt agencies, people that are chasing debt, who have bought the debt off the creditor, or even the creditors themselves, they just accept your plan. They just go, you know what? Yeah, okay, pay us, pay us tenner a month then. So that's what I've been doing. The bailiffs aren't doing that. And they just, they use their, their threatening language and behavior because they want more. So standing my ground, I hope Bristol and Suter send it back to the council. I'll approach the council next week in seven days. And do you know what I'll do? I'll vlog it as well. That's how I'm dealing with it. The first thing I did was I, I found what is the power? What will happen? You know, what is the worst? The way I started to think like this is I saw a TED talk by Tim Ferriss. It was called Fear Setting. And it was an exercise where you go, what if I dot, 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 dot. And the way he ex explained it was, it was him like chasing a goal or did something. I flipped it around and I did, what if I went bankrupt? What if I this? What if I that? And no matter what happens, at the end, everything's going to be okay, as that song goes. Every thing, gonna be all right. I might go fucking bankrupt, I might get evicted again, I might do this, I might do that, but you know what? I've still got air in my lungs, I've still got two beautiful children, everything's going to be okay. I can always rebuild. And when I had that, that mindset, I realised that it's a, it's a stoic philosophy, it's a stoic mindset. I'm not going to go too much into it, but it's called stoicism. So anybody that is dealing with overthinking, please Google Stoicism and read some books on it because it massively, massively helped me. And that's how I'm dealing with my debt situation. Gonna get back to work now. Sorry I've rambled for 10 minutes. Catch you in the next vlog.